Hello guys, uh, I've been in Arcvis for some time but I never actually done a tutorial so I decided to show you some bits how I did this animation, how I created these uh, animated trees with noise and uh, this lovely water caustics all rendered in Corona and 3ds Max. And just to let you know it's not gonna be about modeling, it's just gonna be some quick animation tricks. So let's get started! So for the curtains I go into the vertex mode and I see, uh, you see I already have the soft selection selected, I'll show you where it is, just down here and I select the part and which selects also a little bit more, it just doesn't have, I mean obviously the red has the biggest, strongest uh, effect and then it goes to blue which is the lowest effect, it, it works for this kind of things. And then I apply the noise and I give it some give it some strength and also you need to yes you need to click the animate animate the frames and this is just gonna give you a nice uh, wobble of the thing and that's that's enough fractal as well you can add and it's gonna work pretty well for these kind of shots. For the cameras I for this kind of rotating cameras I like to use a dummy which I select roughly around the focus object and what I do then I just uh, attach with this attach tool camera to the dummy and, and then when it's all attached you can just simply rotate it like this you can see it in the left viewport how it rotates and then you just create keyframes on at the beginning then move them i noticed i already had the camera animated the camera itself animated slightly forward as well you can notice it i've done it before so yeah i just animate the dummy like that and you will have a nice rotating camera okay and for the palm trees I'll just show you as well, keep it pretty simple as with the curtain. I like to select a few vertexes around the edges. That's where most of the movement is going to be happening from the wind. And yeah, that's it. Just roughly do it, doesn't have to be precise. Apply the soft selection and Again, uh, I'll give it the values up to where the movement is going to be happening. Apply the noise while the vertices are still selecting, so it's going to be affecting only the selection area, and you can see how it's already wobbling nicely. And just, yeah, maybe just a little bit more. And also, just to give it a little bit more detail in the animation, I like to apply another noise on top of it maybe keep i should keep the vertices selected as well for this one yep keep it selected and then have the noise there and just this values will be a little bit lower smaller just a small thing yeah i think you can adjust it to your own liking how you I like it sometimes it's just too strong so it's it's all about having it like subtle subtle movements like this yeah and you can see the show was here you can see just the leaves are moving gently into the wind and I think that's enough for this kind of shot and now I just want to show you the water here I already created it so I'm just gonna create a new plane and go step by step how i done it first you need to you need to subdivide it so it works well for for the displacement because we're going to be applying the displacement right on the top this should be enough five centimeters a lot of subdivisions there then we apply the displacement which we're going to control with the strength but first we need to create a noise map which i already have created here before for the water but I'm just gonna show you how I done it here. Drag it into the 
material editor. Yeah, I have, uh, what did I have? A uh, free around there and, and yeah, I'm just gonna copy the value. So it was 20 and uh, the fractal. And then I just plug it into the displacement there. Now all I need to do is just to make the strength a little bit higher and you will see it's already kind of creating the noise map in the geometry itself. So when you... Okay, it doesn't work yet because I need to press animate. I need to animate the face, of course. So what do you do? Create a keyframe from the beginning and then go in the back and I think I had around 10 in there. So now it's animating. Now it's a little bit too strong. Just lower it down. I can see the stronger you go, higher it's going to be. But for this kind of pool water, that's enough to have it around 3. That's it. I think for that one, I, I also plugged in the noise map into the material itself just to kind of enhance the effect. And here you can see of the material, how I created it as well. And that's it. Applied it. Applied to the plane and that should be it. Okay, and now how I animated a subtle movement of this floating bird. Again, I like to have the... Uh, I like to use the noise and the dummy. So first I created this uh, kind of a path with the spline. I'm just gonna make it a little bit uh, longer this time, just so you see it. And I create the dummy. Here it is. Just created it down there, I'm just gonna move everything down there. Okay, make it a little bit smaller. And now I just use the path. Okay, I just made the spline a little bit more softer and I just use the path constraint. It's gonna take me some time to find it. But a little bit up. That's not it yet. This yeah, path constraint here. Attach the dummy to the spline and it's gonna create animated dummy across the whole spline. And I'll just also give it some Okay, maybe, okay, the spline was too long, I'm just gonna make it a little bit shorter. And now I will give it some uh, noise rotation for the dummy as well, which is going to simulate the wind or the waves in the water. So, yes, uh, noise again, it's gonna take some time to find it. Where is it? There it is. You can see at the beginning it's very strong. You can test it. See, it's uh, rotating. Yeah. Really, thing. So we just have to adjust the values, the strength values. I think I had it at a set of five. Okay, I'm gonna attach the bird to it first. So you can see it. See, it's just too strong. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna play with the values a little bit more. Can, if you want to then, if you want to move the bird, you just have to move the spline. Okay, adjust the values and adjust a little bit better. But I think we need to adjust the frequency as well because it's moving quite fast. So here it is, you can see the graph as well as you're changing the values. Okay, almost there. Yep, yeah, I think that looks about right. So uh, it's better to play it in real time as well because now I'm just scrolling through the thing. If I play it in, yeah, it's a bit too fast compared to the video. So I will just uh, 
probably make the spline a little bit shorter so it doesn't travel such a long distance okay adjust the bezier as well oh that's it yeah and that's how i created the floating bird and then i just position it on top of the water it doesn't really have to interact with the waves so much you will and now we're just gonna quickly look at some render settings again uh, very simple you set the Set the, how many frames you want to render, save it. I usually have the noise for the animation, I have it a little bit higher, depends how clean you wanted to have it. I use the Intel CPU denoiser for it as well. The call sticks are usually quite heavy, so it takes a time to render. Make sure you have it enabled. Also, you should make sure that you have it enabled on your light source as well. On the, in this case, is the sun. Yep. That's it, all enabled here, and um, yeah, that's about it, I think. We can just then test it, press render, and yep, it's going to, okay, I'm just going to probably well, I hope you taken away something from this video and uh, I hope the video was understandable enough and uh, yes, please uh, comment if you didn't understand anything and I will try to reply to you in the comments below the video. Thanks, bye.